So you've probably heard the term spirit of prophecy equated with the writings of Ellen White, but is it actually the case that her writings are the spirit of prophecy? Our goal here in this video isn't necessarily going to be to explain exactly what the spirit of prophecy is. We do have other videos here on this channel that do that. But in this video, we're going to look at some statements from James White in light of this question. Are Ellen White's writings the spirit of prophecy? And we'll examine these things from his point of view. Now, the individual statements we're going to be looking at here are taken from his book, Life Sketches. And if you want to get the broader context of his viewpoint, I would definitely suggest reading more of his book in its entirety. And you'll find that link down below. Now, we'll just be going through these quotes in the order that they're found in Life Sketches. And most of them come from chapter 10, but this first quote is found on page 329, which is the very ending of chapter 9. And here, James says, the spirit of prophecy has been appealing to the church through Mrs. W during the past 35 years. Now, now that we've read that, let's just recall the question that we're asking. Are Ellen White's writings the spirit of prophecy? That's the question we're seeking to answer here. So, okay, where do we start? Let's begin just by breaking down this order of communication, this line of transmission that James is describing. So first we have the spirit of prophecy and then who is the spirit of prophecy appealing to the spirit of prophecy is appealing to the church. And then lastly, what is the medium that the spirit of prophecy is appealing to the church through the spirit of prophecy is appealing to the church through Mrs. W or let's just say Ellen White. So we'll just spell it out really clearly here. The spirit of prophecy to the church through Ellen White. Ellen White is the instrument used by the spirit of prophecy to communicate to the church. And I'm sure this is easy enough. I think you can agree that this line of transmission works, but let's just take it a step further and identify the three parts in this line of communication. And we can do so using three simple terms. So there's the sender, the medium, and the recipient. So the sender appeals through the medium and through that medium, the sender appeals to the recipient. So according to this statement by James, who is the sender, the spirit of prophecy, who is the recipient, the church, and through what medium is the spirit of prophecy appealing to the church. And we can plainly see it's through Ellen White. Okay. That makes sense. Now let's just take a moment and consider something. So let's just say if James White thought that Ellen White's writings were the spirit of prophecy, then would what he's describing here, this line of transmission, this, you know, mode of communication, would that still make sense? So hypothetically, his statement would have to go something like this. Ellen White's writings have been appealing to the church through Mrs. W during the past 35 years. So now let's try breaking down this statement, just like we did with his actual statement. So first we would have Ellen White's writings, and then who would Ellen White's writings be appealing to the church? And then what would the medium be that Ellen White's writings would be appealing to the church through Ellen White's writings would be appealing to the church through Ellen White. So Ellen White's writings through Ellen White to the church. Okay. So let me just ask you, would it make sense for an author's writings to appeal through the author? Well, no, the way it works in reality is that an author appeals through his or her writings. The writings of an author are produced by the author and those writings are the instrument that they use to communicate, not vice versa. In James White's actual statement, he puts the spirit of prophecy first and says that it communicated through Alan White. Now, this isn't a problem if he understood the spirit of prophecy to be something other than Alan White's writings, something that gave her her message. But if we insert the idea that Alan White's writings are the spirit of prophecy, like we have here in this hypothetical statement, it makes the statement nonsensical, placing the writings as the first step in the communication, then the author, then the recipient. So hopefully it's easy to see that this line of transmission, this order of communication, it just doesn't work. 
The most important point to take home from James White's actual statement is that he could not be equating the spirit of prophecy with Ellen White's writings. And according to his statement, whatever the spirit of prophecy is, it's not something that Ellen White produced. It's something that used Ellen White to communicate to the church. And we'll see in the next statements, Ellen White wasn't the only one whom the spirit of prophecy used. Now, these next statements begin on page 330. And here, James says, When all was lost in Adam, and the shades of night darkened the moral heavens, there soon appeared the star of hope in Christ, and with it was established a means of communication between God and man through the gift of prophecy. All right, so let's just pause for a moment here and notice James is talking about the establishment of a means of communication between God and man, and this is the gift of prophecy. And he's talking about it as being established way back in the beginning when all was lost in Adam. So just keep that part in mind. Okay, so moving on. The manifestation of the spirit of prophecy was designed for all dispensations. The sacred record nowhere restricts it to any particular period of time from the fall to the final restitution. The Bible recognizes its existence alike in the patriarchal, Jewish, and Christian ages. Through this medium, God communed with holy men of old. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied. And then James goes on to talk about other prophets that receive communication from God through this medium, the gift of prophecy. Okay, something to notice here is that we see immediately after the first statement we read, James is now using the term spirit of prophecy. And he's clearly talking about the same thing as when he said gift of prophecy in the first statement. So he's using these two terms, the gift of prophecy and the spirit of prophecy in the same way. Now, going back to our question, are Ellen White's writings the spirit of prophecy? Let's take a closer look at what James is saying. So in his first statement here, the one on page 330, James is saying that the gift of prophecy or the spirit of prophecy was established way back in the beginning when all was lost in Adam. Now, if James understood the spirit of prophecy to be Ellen White's writings, he wouldn't have said that the spirit of prophecy was established all the way back when all was lost in Adam. He would have to change a statement to begin with something like, after the great disappointment, when Ellen first lifted her pen, and then go on to say, was established a means of communication between God and man through the gift of prophecy. But that's not what he said. Now, let's take a look at his next statement, the one on page 331. James says that the manifestation of the spirit of prophecy was designed for all dispensations from the fall to the final restitution. Now, if James thought the spirit of prophecy was Ellen White's writings, how could it be that her writings were designed for all dispensations, especially because at the time that he wrote this, her writings had only been around for less than 50 years. What would that mean for the thousands of years prior? Okay, let's try this from one other angle. Is James here saying that the spirit of prophecy is restricted to any certain period of time? Well, he's not saying it started in 1844. And also notice he's not saying that it would end with the death of Ellen White. In fact, the only time restriction he's giving is that the spirit of prophecy is something that started all the way back in Eden Lost, and it will last all the way until Eden Restored. He says that the Bible recognizes its existence during the patriarchal, Jewish, and Christian ages. So if the spirit of prophecy existed throughout all those ages, it's most definitely not limited to only today. And the last thing I want to mention here is where towards the end, James says, through this medium, God communed with holy men of old. And this terminology should sound really familiar. Again, here, James is describing a line of transmission, an order of communication. So through this medium, God communed with holy men of old. So what's the medium? As we just read, the medium is the spirit of prophecy. Who's the sender? God. God is the one communing. And then who's the recipient? Holy men of old. So the chain here is God communing with holy men of old through the spirit of prophecy. 
Now, why are we going through all these details? Well, just remember our initial question, are Ellen White's writings the spirit of prophecy? Just to make things super obvious, let's take James' statement here and try swapping these terms, spirit of prophecy, with Ellen White's writings. So if we switch them out, then James would have to be saying, through Ellen White's writings, God communed with holy men of old. And I think you can see just how illogical that is. It wouldn't make any sense. Again, our goal here isn't necessarily to explain what the spirit of prophecy is, but just to clearly show, according to these statements, there's no way James could have understood Ellen White's writings to be the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so let's keep reading, see what he says next. In this next paragraph, he says, God spoke to his prophets in the Jewish dispensation in visions and dreams. If the spirit of prophecy nearly disappeared from the Jewish church for a few centuries toward the close of that dispensation, on account of the corruptions in that church, it reappeared at its close to usher in the Messiah. All right, so the words to pay special attention to here are disappeared and reappeared. What does it mean about the spirit of prophecy if James said it nearly disappeared? Could it disappear if it were never present in the first place? And the same thing goes for when he said reappeared. What does it mean if the spirit of prophecy reappeared? Well, of course, it must have already appeared in order for it to disappear and to reappear. It must have once been present. Okay, so now again, keeping our question in mind, are Ellen White's writings the spirit of prophecy? Again, let's try switching the terms that James used here. Let's switch the spirit of prophecy for Ellen White's writings and see what happens. Does it make sense to say, if Ellen White's writings nearly disappeared from the Jewish church for a few centuries toward the close of that dispensation on account of the corruptions in that church, they, Ellen White's writings, reappeared at its close to usher in the Messiah? No, for sure, this doesn't make sense. Ellen White's writings definitely did not nearly disappear for a few centuries or reappear, especially in the time of the Jewish church. In fact, her writings didn't even exist at that time. Therefore, according to his own words, James White simply could not have understood Ellen White's writings to be the spirit of prophecy. And then moving on to the next paragraph, James says, Again, still later, we see the beloved John in the Isle of Patmos, imbued with the spirit of prophecy in all its fullness. The wonderful revelation was given unto him when more than half a century of the Christian age had passed. And here, the New Testament record leaves us without a single intimation that the gifts of the Spirit should cease from the church till the day of glory should be ushered in by the second appearing of Jesus Christ. So if Alan White's writings are the spirit of prophecy, how could John be imbued with them? That wouldn't make sense for at least two reasons. One, were Ellen White's writings around when John was on Patmos? Obviously not. And two, so far, James has already given us a pretty good understanding of what the spirit of prophecy is. And what we've seen him describe so far doesn't line up with it being defined as the writings of Ellen White. According to what James says in this statement, the spirit of prophecy is something that people can be imbued with. And that's what gave John and others their message. Like we saw earlier, the spirit of prophecy is the medium that God uses to commune with man and is active throughout all different points in history. James didn't see the spirit of prophecy as beginning with Ellen White, and he also didn't see it ending with her either. In fact, as we just read, there's no intimation that these gifts should cease until the second coming. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea, and this next one's a pretty easy one. On page 335, James says, and when that people arise in the last generation of men who shall observe all 10 of the precepts of God's holy law and recognize the revival of the spirit of prophecy, they may expect to feel that bitterness from their opponents, which can arise only from the direct inspiration of Satan. All right. So the phrase we're going to look at here is the revival of the spirit of prophecy. So what does it mean to be revived? Well, it either means to restore to consciousness or life or to restore from a depressed and active or unused state or to bring back. Now, James is using the term revived in reference to the spirit of prophecy. 
And again, just like reappear means it must have once appeared in order for the spirit of prophecy to be revived or restored to activity or brought back. That means it must have once been active. Could it be that James was referring to Ellen White's writings? Did Ellen White's writings previously exist to this? Let's try swapping out those terms one more time to read it this way. The revival of Ellen White's writings. And no, you can clearly see there's no way he could be referring to the revival of her writings. Finally, in this last statement, James is summarizing what he understood about the spirit of prophecy. He says, we have seen that the manifestation of the spirit of prophecy became necessary in consequence of man's being separated from the visible presence of God. But when the tabernacle of God shall be with men and he shall dwell with them and God himself shall be with them, when Christ shall come again with all the holy angels and receive his people unto himself, that where he shall be, there they may be also. And when man redeemed shall walk and talk with God and Christ and angels in Eden restored, then there will be no further need of the spirit of prophecy. And notice James italicized the word then. He did that to emphasize that point in time when there will be no further need of the spirit of prophecy. So he's saying the spirit of prophecy was manifested way back in Eden lost and will be necessary until Eden restored. And then there will be no further need. So when we ask James White, hey, James, what's the spirit of prophecy? His answer isn't that it's Ellen White's writings. And he doesn't say that the spirit of prophecy is some special thing in the last days that's an additional body of writings beyond the Bible. He simply says it's God speaking through living prophets throughout the ages, all the way until the second coming. So in conclusion, to the honest questioner, we can see that James White did not equate Ellen White's writings with the spirit of prophecy. If you'd like to learn more specifically about what the spirit of prophecy is, there are fuller explanations available to watch on this channel. So be sure to check them out. They're linked right down below. And if you'd like to keep advancing Adventism, then you can subscribe to our channel and then click the bell to get notifications for when new content is available. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.